In 2004 and a half, GM released the LLY, and what the LLY came with was a EGR system um, and a, a variable geometry turbocharger. So we have a similar looking exhaust housing. You can see how it's got the, the foot built into it. Um, the, the section all fits together uh, kind of similarly. What's different is that this is a Garrett unit, okay, and instead of using a three bolt flange on the inlet, like on the LB7, now we get a V-band flange on the inlet, okay. Um, we also get a set of vanes, and you'll hear that word thrown around quite a bit on newer style turbochargers for the Duramax. Exhaust gas comes in the back of this turbocharger, okay, from the up pipe, similar as it did in the LV7. Comes through and around, and uh, let me open this up for you. That exhaust gas will come through these slots in the vanes and act on the turbine wheel. That's the turbine wheel. Okay, now depending on where those vanes are set, or the vane position, the velocity of that exhaust gas can be controlled electronically. So we can change our desired boost and effectively change how much energy we're getting out of the turbine of this turbocharger within reason, um, and increase or decrease the velocity or flow on the turbine side and change the boost level, make the turbocharger more or less efficient, increase exhaust back pressure to drive EGR function, um, close the vanes to choke the motor and provide a turbine braking situation. So we have a lot of flexibility there. Uh, the vane mechanism is a pretty cool little deal here. You got a solenoid, uh, controls oil pressure. Goes in this side, okay. And we also have, there's like a if you can see this mechanism here, okay, so this is the controller of the vanes, and it fits in this groove right here. Okay, and attached to that mechanism is a cam lobe, which actuates uh, this position sensor. Okay, so it can tell the ECU where the vanes are at or what's going on. Now, obviously, there's a lot more electronics uh, doodads, gizmos, whatever you want to call them, stuff to go wrong. So we see a lot more failures on this style turbocharger. Not that it's uh, failure prone by any means, but it's certainly not as reliable as the old LB7 turbocharger. The LBZ and LMM style turbochargers were not included in this discussion, but they're pretty similar to the LOY. In our next episode, I'll explain the changes made for 2011 in the LML platform. I'm Nick. Thanks for watching.